Fuel scarcity seems to be biting harder and harder as the day goes by. We're seeing that black marketers are having a field day where they are selling the petrol at 1,000 naira to a liter. So this is really affecting businesses, commuters, transporters, and every other person seems to be having a very tough time with the issue of this fuel scarcity. I am Sarah Elisha Dasha on the program. It's the dailies where we keep you updated with all that is happening on the Nigerian newspaper. I will be doing the program alongside Rachel Tanzi. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm fine. How about you? Rachel, things are hot. Yeah. I'm fine. But the issue of this fuel scarcity, I mm -hmm. really do not know how to put things in place because it seems... I don't know if things are going to get easy anytime soon, Rich. I mean, yesterday was when we saw how hard things are. Yesterday was when we saw that it's biting hard on business. Mm -hmm. Now, Rich, your transport fare has changed. It has. If you were spending 500 naira, believe me, the transport now is 700 naira. It is. Daily. And then it's not that see we're seeing um, there's going to be an increase in salary or anything. Mm -hmm. So that is to tell you that even the cost of commodities in the market, Richard. It's going to skyrocket and every other day. Yeah. So I really do not know what the government is doing. Even though yesterday we saw Ibman saying the fact that it would take about two weeks for petrol to be supplied. And then we saw even the GMD of NNPCL saying that, you know what, we have stock. And I asked the question, if you have stock, what is stopping you from making sure that everybody have this thing presently? So I, I mean, for me... Um, the devastating mm, part mm. of this whole hardship is literally our president defending the removal of fuel subsidy. However, because we, we started seeing that on the papers yesterday, we saw that on the paper yesterday, and then if you go ahead to listen or to read what he said, that we were going into bankruptcy I mean, there were no statistics, there were no, mm. no numbers at all. Mm -hmm. But that's not the disturbing part of the defense for me. It's him going ahead and saying certain things like the youths, we have a vibrant, strong, coping, elastic. I'm, I'm not quoting him word to word, mm, but phrasing. this is the meaning of mm. what he is saying, that we have Nigerian youth that will be able to keep their heads above water despite the hardship. And then the question is, are you taking these decisions because you know you have citizens that can take the hardship? Mm -hmm. Or are you taking these decisions, putting other modalities in place and concerns to make sure that the hardship is not being felt? There is absolutely nothing wrong with you taking a drastic decision economically if you know and you insist and you're standing on your ground that mm -hmm. it is for the long term. However, as an administrator, you are to make sure by all means that you do whatever it takes to reduce the toll of hardship on your people. And this is what the Tinubu administration is failing to do, Sele. They are refusing to do anything drastic, temporary, while we are waiting for the long-term outcome and the impact, the good impact that you are assuring Nigerians that will be of the decisions you have taken. You have refused to put in temporary things in place to reduce the hardship. Wage awards are not coming in. CNG buses are taking forever. Pilates are not coming. Today we have 42,000 metric tons of grain. Tomorrow, mm. 120,000 metric tons of grain. We have not seen any. It's piloted to the state government. We have not seen it trucks and five billion left right center nothing nothing has been done and you go to the world economic um, forum and you are telling that your citizens have the capacity to endure the hardship and that you had no um, you had no option but to do this despite knowing that it's going to affect the masses but then you know that you have citizens that can enjoy it you have youth that will always find a way around every situation that they find themselves and so you sit down and you refuse to do nothing to reduce this mm. hardship and we are getting to a year of continuous consistent hardship in this country and nothing nothing has been put in place if you say it's going to be long run, fine. We are waiting to start seeing the dividends of this decision. But what are the temporary things you're putting in place? Nothing. 
sell and nothing is being put in place and this is the the heartbreaking part of all of these Honestly. things and then we will go on and see and then you begin to wonder okay our market are saying the right thing concerning well landing price because um scarcity alone is not enough for this type of skyrocketing in, 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 in price. price. Because if it's available, why are we not seeing it? Or are you stopping it to sort things out for you to be able to get your bearings concerning what the full point price will be at the end of the day? Because you just can't help but wonder if the NNPCL, because all we've been having ever since the removal of sub full subsidy is that the amount of NNPCL is different from it's what the marketers market. are saying. But mm -hmm. either way, when we, when we look at it, what marketers are saying keeps playing, keeps playing out. NNPCL are saying we are not paying subsidy. This is a full pound price we're giving you. Marketers are saying, well, landing price have changed. It means the price of um, petrol uh, at the filling station is supposed to be different. And gradually, we are seeing that the price is increasing, despite Mr. President assuring us that it will not be above 700. And now we are seeing mm -hmm. where it's getting to gradually. Mm -hmm. So who are we to believe? At is it the ones that are talking yeah. and we're seeing the evidence which are the marketers or is it NNPCL that is saying one thing and then their word is not aligning with their mm -hmm. actions mm -hmm. and all of that if it's available why are we not seeing it and if you are not paying subsidy then and you are assuring us that uh, the full pound mm -hmm. price is going to remain how it is why is it changing mm -hmm. and all of that so I'm just um, I'm just hoping because um, we just can't help but hope we keep saying that we are here we can't stop hoping and uh, we are waiting to see the administration of renewed hope not dashing the hope of mm. nigerians away because every day you wake up um i mean our tank of hope is reducing whether we like it or not Honestly. if if mm. your if your hope battery was a hundred percent i i i think it's 50 percent now or because below, uh, that. Be, below that and all of that so um i i just hope rather than speeches of having youths that could endure hardship and will always find a way around mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to an administration that will put things in place that your citizens don't have to go through that hardship because um, it's it's not supposed to be like that and mm -hmm. it's unfortunate that it might look like we are enduring it but we are losing it gradually whether we like it or not and it's not the matter of endurance it's the matter of where the economy is plunging in so it will get to the point that there won't even be anything to endure at the end of the day and that i just hope that that wouldn't be the case for honestly us. rachel you know you just cannot help to wonder if we are going through renew hope or renew hardship at this present yeah. I, I, I know that um, earlier in the year we saw where they said the first half of the year was going to be tough. But not this tough. I mean, not to the point where you'll be looking for fuel and you can't find it. So, Richard, right now, if you're used to actually eating a loaf of bread for 1.5, believe you me, with the way things are, yes. it will no longer be 1.5. And we're seeing that even the quality and the quantity is reducing mm -hmm. every day. If you, have a, if you have a child in your house and you normally buy a biscuit, you know that right now there's no even 15 naira biscuit in the market anymore. So if you want to enjoy a good biscuit, you have to buy a biscuit for 300 and above. And even at that, so that is just to tell you that, I mean, I think it was last week we saw where the, how much the cost of making jollof rice in the mm -hmm. house would yes. cost, Rachel. So <laughs> you can imagine what it will be presently. Yes. So for weddings that have been left, right, and that, I imagine what it will cost. Mm -hmm. So this is just in a way to make humor out of the whole issue. But I'm just hoping, honestly, that this government know what they are doing and they intend to actually look into um, the plight of the people. Just like you mentioned, the palliative and all of that. We're saying that CNG buses will start rolling in Plateau State. Mm -hmm. You need to have a card and then the mm -hmm. card has to be loaded with 3,000 and above and all that. of that. And not everybody, how many buses do we? And so many other things, Rachel, right mm -hmm. now. But let's just hope that um, the government know what they're doing and yeah. they will do the best. Well, let's go through the papers and see what the papers have in store for us this morning. All right, starting with Nigerian Tribune, labor set to picket airlines over refusal to unionize workers. You can find details on page 28. 
Edo to pay 70,000 Naira minimum wage. Nigeria must spend $10 billion yearly till 2034 to revive power sector, says Minister. Senators oppose new tariff regime. And then you can find details on page two. And looking at how, how much has been sunk into the power sector over the years, it's, it's more than $10 billion that, couldn't, that can, have not been accounted for. We have seen the probe on going you know, for the Mambila power and that is over three billion dollars so we've been sinking money into that I think what we need is transparency and lack of corruption but money has been going into a lot of sectors and nothing can be shown for it at the end of the day still on Nigerian Tribune black marketers have failed day as petrol sells for 1,000 naira per liter Filling stations still fell between 650 and 900 naira. Q's transportation situation worsened residents grown. Details can be found on page 5. The big story, FX crisis, EFCC to freeze 1,146 individual company accounts. Account holders accused of illegal forex dealing, terrorism financing, and money laundering. My suspension plot tied to 2027. This is a statement from Ganduji. Over 30 Easter advert messages filled compliance tests coming from Akon. You can find details on page 13. IMF projects growth in sub sahara Africa economy to hit 3.8%. Nigeria's economy has escaped sabotage phase, a statement from President Tinubu. On UTME results, 8,401 candidates call above 300. Jam withholds result of 64,624 candidate details can be found on page 2. Prioritized workers, Nigerian welfare labor tells federal government, says poverty killing workers. You can find details on page two. And you know, sometimes tell when this statement of poverty kills workers or hunger, um, we, we literally think like, I mean, is, um, for example, directly, you can say the person didn't get food to eat. Sometimes it's the health challenges that you get as a result of the lack of food, that you, the nutrients that you need, or the, 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 the medical care that you couldn't get in hand because you don't have the money. I believe a lot of Nigerians don't go for checkups. It's not because they don't want to. It's because they cannot afford it. And we can, we can talk about the other gaps in our um, health sector where you don't know that certain things is easily accessible and all of that, but that's on another side. But on another level is that a lot of people think that healthcare is expensive, but it is. It's not that they think, the fact is that it is. So sometimes they rather say, well, since I'm not ill, I don't need to go and check. I'd rather do use the money for something else because of course this person is not in a position to have in excess to do everything they want to do. So this is the way poverty kills. It's, it's, not, the di it's not like poverty is in a form that comes and shoot people or kill. It's in this way, malnutrition, when you have people, when you have people not having certain nutrients in their body because a lot of illnesses can be linked mm. to deficiencies mm. in our body of one thing or another and before you know it you are you know a victim or when, when people slump and die you wonder what is what it is it's all of that even stress what about what does stress do to our body it's also a very it's, it's a killer stress is a, is a killer we don't just know all of that so yes poverty is killing people in Nigeria mm. and in Africa it will, it will, but then um, we just, you know, hope, sell a hope at the end of the day because it's really saddening mm -hmm. and all of that. And you can find details on page two. And I hope that labor will stay and make sure that the minimum wages are enough to, you know what, not just keep a common Nigeria head above water, but for a better standard of living at the end of the day. You know, when you're mentioning that labor should stand up, what I'm just seeing from Medu State here, saying the mm -hmm. fact that it will be paying 70,000 naira minimum wage it might not be much but i really have to commend them for this step forward the yeah. fact that we know with what is happening presently richard you and i even know that even seven thousand won't do it won't do much <laughs> two months or three months later. you can't even pay for your house rent yeah. for a year so there's so much that needs to be done and i'm just hoping just like you said when we say poverty we saw the issue of insecurity 
poverty because people cannot afford so they rather you know go into crime and all of that yeah. if that would pay their bills and if that would be able to meet up with their family needs so i'm hoping that you know just like you said the government will really really do something it's painful when you want nigerians to understand you want nigerians to endure at the detriment of you people enjoying does that make sense in any way we keep saying the fact that you were elected into office to be a servant but I don't think that our leaders realize that they are supposed to be yeah, servants. Yeah. Rather, they are making the masses to be the servants. You are being employed by the masses. Your salary is being paid by the taxpayers' money. So what are we saying? Who is supposed to be suffering if we're going to look at the literary? As a leader, <laughs> you're the one that's to sacrifice. Yeah. You should be trekking so that Nigerians can actually have CNG buses to help them. So just like you said, there is when you're going to look at that word poverty, so many things are underlying mm. on that. And we hope that our government will be able to rise up and defend its people eventually. eventually. And that's all the news on Nigerian Tribune. All right, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper. Don't pay new tariff without 20 hours electricity. This is coming from the minister, and I hope Nigerians are listening because some of us do even enjoy 10 hours of electricity. So we'll stop paying for the tariff, but I wonder what does that, um, what would that mean eventually? You can read more detail of that on page 18. Finidi George is new coach of Super Eagles. We have to congratulate him on that, and you'll find more detail for sport lovers on page 22. Trending, we have Soware wants Abuja school persecuted for money laundering. Nigeria loses $59.2 billion. Okay, I think. Nigeria loses $9.2 billion annually to foreign shipping lines. That's on numbers. You can find both the trending and numbers on page 2. PT released Azu book on media, content, and money. Tinibu stands on electoral reform on clear, says Yenge Africa. Detail of that found on page 21. EFCC pro Yahaya Bello protesters clash in Abuja, Dita Fan on page 4. Only 108 senators can decide Ninge's fate coming from the Senate. And on Ganduji, pro Kanu Commission seek useful information. Court stop multi choice from increasing DSTV and Go TV rates. You can find detail on page 20. And the big story supply cleat wasn't for scarcity nationwide. We have not had supply in two weeks coming from marketers. Petro Q Linga motorist commuters are stranded. And then if crisis persists, we will intervene coming from the Senate. I just hope that they do need to wait for this thing to persist. You can intervene now. You see, Rachel, these are things we're seeing. We hope that the Senate will... Ref I mean, what do you mean Why would you if, say it, if, if it persists? I mean, Nigerians will not love to hear this. Rather, they want to hear that, you know what, the senator representing my constituents is ready to speak on our behalf, yeah. is ready to do something. Intervene now. Do not wait for it to persist. I think this is what Nigerians want to hear rather than saying if it persists. If so it how persists. long are we talking about right now? It has been persisting. Mm. I mean, the hardship has been persisting. Well, issues have been persisting. It is peculiar now. It's it been having its up and down season, but mm. that doesn't mean the uh, fall crises have not been persisting in this country. Why would our senators sit down? You're first of all supposed to avert it from happening. It's not even supposed to happen in the first mm. place if you all are doing your work. It's not even supposed to be there. And then it's not happening, and then you sit down, and you're still saying something like if it persists. Mm. And we keep saying, Sele, we are yet to have selfless leaders. I mean, with due respect, they are very selfish as it is now. And they are absolutely doing nothing. Because if they were doing something, we would see it. It would be out there, Pope and Claire. And this thing is not even supposed to happen in the first place. So if it persists, and you know it will persist, because it's not the first time it's starting and it won't mm. be the last, even before full subsidy removal, petrol scarcity issues and every other um, 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 fuel issues have been there for long now. What are you doing about it? So I just hope rather than this kind of statement coming from our senators and our representatives, we just hope for more proactive measures, Sele, mm. stop it from happening rather than waiting for it to happen and then also adding on top that if it persists and all of that mm -hmm. it's really a sad one very richard as i say we're looking forward to a time where we prevent things from happening yeah. 
rather than looking for how to correct it after yes. it has happened. Because it's, it, we, we spend more correcting yeah. than when we decide to prevent it. True. You know, the issue of birth scarcity was not this bad when we had other people supplying apart from the NMPCR. Yes. But the moment the NMPCR took mono monetization of it, that was when we saw that everything. Now, here we are having market that's been for two weeks. They have not had supply. Mm -hmm. NMPCR is quiet about the whole thing. Yeah. And you're seeing their stock. So they tend to be conflicting, I mean, statement coming from both bodies so we just hope that we can actually have these bodies coming together yeah do something the sad part about things is that richard even when this petrol become comes and then we have it everywhere believe me transport will not go back to what it was before it won't. so when if you are paying 250 now the keke will not tell you that okay right now i'm buying it now at 600 now mm -hmm. so you start paying 150 mm -hmm. you know you continue paying you the 250. Will. yeah so i'm hoping that we'll look into that and then help nigerians Downside, we have picture story, so you can do well to grab the leadership and read more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you. On Vanguard newspaper, banks expand loan size by 57% to touch 7.2 trillion naira. Illegal forex trading court OK's EFCC's request to freeze 1,146 bank accounts. $10 billion required annually for 10 years to fix power sector coming from the federal government dstv go tv rates hike tribunal stops multi-choice you can find details on page nine the big story fair hike travelers commuters grown as first scarcity bites harder we have adopted new strategy to end shortage. This is coming from Meman, and it will take a few days to eliminate queues. A statement from NNPC. Tax force rates filling stations in Lorraine once against hoarding, as Lagos government once again creating gridlock on roads. Details can be found on page five. Terrorism financing. Court chides federal government over shoddy prosecution of Tukur Mamu. You can find details on page nine. We have a sport column. NFF appoints Finidi as coach of Super Eagles. Details can be found on page 29. 2024 UTME jam releases 1,842,464 candidate results with whole 64,624 details can be found on page four and that's all the news on Vanguard newspaper. On the blueprint um, newspaper, Tribunal halts multi-choice from increasing DSTV and Go TV subscription rates, detail on page 21. Transfer me out of DSS custody. Terrorist negotiator Mamu begs the court. You can find more detail on that. CBN stops OP, Pamply, and two others from onboarding new customers. And then that was released yesterday where the CBN gave that. that for the meantime, no new customers will be accommodated. They need to go through one or two things, some paperwork. So the only people they have present, they are the old customers. So for those who are intending to join it, you can see here OP, Pamply, Cody, and others as well. So you can find more of that inside the paper. The big story, our economy has gone beyond phase of sabotage, coming from the president, Chinibu. APC-led government tackling disjointed decisions of the past, coming from Ganduji. Emulate Tinibu, COP wastes in financial expenditure, IMPI tells state governors, more detail found in the paper. And on Forex crisis, court permit EFCC to freeze 1,000. 146 individuals coins accounts. Also still on the paper, Nigeria requires $10 billion for 10 years to revive the power sector. That is coming from the minister. He's saying that 2.9 billion naira subsidy not sustainable without tariff increase. More detail in the paper. Obaseke raised a do workers minimum wage to 70,000 naira. More detail can be found inside the paper on the 2024 utme jam with host result of 64,624 candidates bank lost 18 billion naira to frosters in 2023 coming from the nn nibss downside commuters stranded as transport fares spiked by 50 percent amid frost scarcity detail found on page 21 and that's all the blueprint newspaper
On the punch newspaper, the big story, petrol hits 800 naira as 240 million litre vessels arrive. The rider under the story, five tanker vessels of loading PMS at Lagos Port, independent marketers sell over 800 naira to a litre. Black marketers charge 1,200 naira to a litre. Motorists grown commuters lament rising transport fare. EFCC probes 1,146 frozen accounts for money laundering. Federal government begins fresh bid rounds for oil blocks. More details can be found on page 30. Customers panic as CBN bans OPE, PAMPE, others new accounts. Tinibu will end economic sabotage, Shetima tells African leaders. $2.4 billion forex claims Fixed issues say CBN. You can find details on page 37. Nurse accuses Lagos Hospital of negligence over wife son's debt. 1.4 million UTME candidates caught below 200. This is a report from JAM. You can find details on page 42. And that's all the news on the Punch newspaper. On the Garden newspaper, debt market monopoly hot Nigerians as well subsidy backfires. Detail found inside the paper. Nigeria begs U.S. to repatriate more stolen funds, and then African heads of state canvass 120 billion dollars for continent development. That controversial Lagos Calabar Costa Highway project. You can find the editorial on page two. 8 million households to pay more for prepay meters as NERC deregulates sector. Obasuke announces 70,000 Naira minimum wage for workers. EFCC get a note to freeze 1,146 bank account over Forex crisis. No in Asoro, Ganduji, Tel, Kwankwasu and others you can find more on page 5. And on loyal complicity, how monarchs crook officials fell in legal mining and insecurity in the southwest. More detail of that can be found on page four. But I have a question for our Nigerian government, Richard, concerning Nigeria are begging US to actually return back more student funds. Can they give us a breakdown of what they did with the funds that were recovered? I was thinking the same, sir. Let's talk about that bachelor dude. <laughs> Let us have detail. I mean, paper, original paper works. So mm -hmm. What did they use all this money that were being recovered? Until then, I am not against the fact that we should get more of our funds that have been stuck somewhere overseas. But then for every fund we ask that we want a refund of our money or let's have our money back, what do we intend to do with it? We do, do we have a plan presently as it is, Rachel? Because mm -hmm. when you don't have a plan, the moment the money comes, you will not even know what you want to do yeah. with the money. But when you have a plan, the moment you get the money, you sink it in there, you tell Nigerians this is what is being done. Because I believe that Nigerians want a government that is transparent, accountable, and free of corruption in of every course. angle. So I'm not against it, but I have a question. <laughs> I believe this is a question that Nigerians out there would love to ask their leaders. For every of those funds that we've had, what have we used that money for? And I believe that if Nigerians can have that answer and be satisfied with yeah. their answer, I believe that everything will go well. But let's not keep saying things and then our words and our actions do not match. I think this is where Nigerians will definitely have a problem with their leaders. So that I'm, I'm laughing a little bit because it keeps feeling that the looted fund is being relooted, if there's any word like mm. that, because it can't be accounted for, just as you said. It comes and then that's it. We, we, we press the United States of America over and over and past administrations have been recovering this looted fund. Mm -hmm. But you see the moment it's been recovered and billions of dollars have been recovered in the past years, but the moment it's been recovered and is now in our hands, then it goes quiet. Then later on again, then another administration mm. will come, and when they're in need of money, they start pressing on for it, they recover some of it, and then it ends there. And it's silent, and nobody says anything about what is being used for. So it looks like the looted fund is still being looted by the current administrations, the past administration, any administration of the day that was able to get access or recover some of these looted funds. Mm. And it just boils down to every other thing.
even the revenues we are having, even the borrowed funds we, we, we are getting, Tele, we cannot account for it as it is. We have nothing to show for over the years, only, um, only a debt profile that keeps increasing and increasing and increasing over years, and we are just in massive deficit as a country. So I just hope, rather than just as you said, just saying, give it to us. When it's been recovered, can we know what you're channeling towards? Because we need transparency. We need to grow. And until we can account mm. for every cobble that we spend as a country, I don't think we are heading anywhere. When these funds have been recovered, what are they going to be channeled towards to say, okay, this is the sector mm. that needs this money. And even if you're spreading it across, are these sectors feeling the impact of these funds and all of that? And can mm. Nigerians truly say that our recovered funds were used well and properly, and we can see the, the, the result of it mm -hmm. at the end of the mm -hmm. day. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed and see how things will go. Well, before we continue further with the paper review, we would love to take a break. Please take this down to actually through the stories, and when we come back, we will continue with the paper review. Please stay tuned with us. Make your everyday informative, make your everyday count. Know your world, daily affairs, national and international with authentic news events as they unfold on Global News and Zuma Nigeria, Monday to Friday at 1 p.m. Thank you for staying tuned. It's still the dailies. We have been looking at a number of stories on our paper where we are seeing that businesses, commuters, transporters are actually having a tough time, especially with the issue of the fuel scarcity, where we see marketers are complaining that for two weeks they have not gotten supply. And here we also see NNPC at this month for the main time concerning what is the way forward. As well, coming from the power ministry, where we're seeing that the minister have said that if you do not get 20 hours of electricity or power, you shouldn't pay. So quite a number of stories on the paper that we would love you to go through, through them, and then drop your own views and your contribution regarding them. I still have Rachel Tanzi with me. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome, sir. All right, and I'm Sarah Elisha. So let's take a look at the next paper, which happens to be the Daily Times newspaper. A big story, how I collected $600,000 contract gratification for a method coming from ex-CBN director. As in battle, ex-Apex Bank governor challenges Lagos court jurisdiction to try him. You can find details on page two. JAM releases 2024 UTME results with 64,624 results under investigation. Tinubu reiterates Nigeria's plan to build digital market. Federal government requires $10 billion to revive power sector, coming from the minister. Fell scarcity bites hard Lagos residents grown. Detained hostages negotiator Mamu seeks transfer from DSS to Kuje prison. Obaseki increases minimum wage for Edo workers to 70,000 naira, and that's all the news on the Daily Times. On Nigerian news, the red, we have in Abekuta gas explosion. Ogun sealed the Gasco Marine data found on page 22. 
Lagos establishes cybersecurity adversary board. Naira appreciate by 5.93% on parallel market. Black markets resurfaces as Lagos Ogun commuters beg for relief as the PMS supply worsened. Product sales above 900 Naira to a liter. Detail of that can be found on page 3. NCDMB investment yield profit as Water Meat. Water Smith pays 450 million Naira interim dividend from modular refinery. Mobile Channel most vulnerable as financial institution lose 17.69 billion Naira to fraudsters in 2023. We have two picture story. One is the Transcorp Hilton Abuja a meeting that held yesterday, and the other we can see Ganduji. You can do well to grab the paper and read more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you. On New Telegraph, the big story as Bell scarcity bites harder. TUC blames PMS shortage on federal government delay in activating Patakot refinery operations, asks minimum wage committee to fast track activities. Scarcity caused by logistic issues resolved coming from NNPC Limited. Science packed 400,000 barrel per day capacity facility inside PH refinery. You can find details on page two and five. Naira sustains slight crashes to 1,450 Naira to a dollar on parallel market. You can find details on page 8. On economy, federal government reassures Nigerians, says process under rejuvenation. And we have other stories saying Tinubu to Netherlands Prime Minister, we have high-grade lithium to power global and clean energy. Abia not Kalu deserves support. Commendation says ex Abia deputy speaker. You can find details on page five. Najomo's confirmation on certain coming from NCAA. Shed your sword so we can win on Do Ganduje tells OK Jimo and others. Details can be found on page twenty six. Airpiece aircraft makes emergency landing at Lagos Airport. You can find details on page 8 and 28. And we have ex Senate. All right, let me take the next paper because the same new telegraph was the previous paper. So let's go on the nation newspaper pro EFCC, pro Yahaya Bello protesters at agency headquarters. How I received $600,000 for MFLA, ex CBN director tells the court. Edo workers to earn 70,000 Naira minimum wage from May, detail found on page 3. Ayeda Tiwa gets APC certificate of return. You can find detail on page 3. And we have the electricity, okay, 81,975, 143,836 for meters. Tribuna stop multi-choice rate hike. You can find detail on page three. Money laundry probe EFCC swap on 1,146 bank accounts. Court OK's freezing of account for unauthorized forex dealing and terror financing. We need a hundred million dollars in ten years to fix electricity, says the minister. No supply, no payments of new rates. Senators seek reversal of the tariff hike. More detail in the paper. Petro scarcity leave Nigerians stranded. Queues linger in Lagos, Abuja, and other major cities in the country. Book on writing for media and monetizing it for presentation. You can find detail on page 26. And that's all on the nation newspaper. On the Matrix newspaper, the big story, fresh fuel scarcity. Oil marketers blame NNPCL. Nigerians grown as scarcity bites harder. Black marketers have field day. Our challenge is that we do not have access to the product coming from PETRON. Why latest fuel scarcity will last for more than two weeks coming from oil marketers. Blame slow pace of marketers' license renewal by NMDPRA for contributing to problem. You can find details on page 2. 
Nigeria India bilateral trade hit $20 billion in two years. This is coming from the Envoy. You can start with the details on the front page. NFF appoints Finidi George as head coach of Super Eagles. Power Minister drops bombshell, says federal government needs $10 billion annually to revive sector. Says sector must be made attractive to attract investors and investment. Legal firework looms as MF Play challenges court's jurisdiction to try him for fraud case. Alleged terrorism financier Tukuru Mamu seeks transfer from DSS custody to Kuje prison. You can find details on page 9. JAM releases 2024 UTME results. 8,401 students score. 300 and above. Obaseke reveals why he increased minimum wage to 70,000 naira. Court stops multi choice from increasing DSTV and Go TV tariffs. Details can be found on page two. And we have a sport, uh, uh, an entertainment story rather. Wizkid shades Don Jazzy after his artist Ladipo mocked him. You can find details on page 15. Picture story Shatima at IDA 2000, um, IDA 21, President Kashim Shatima, Vice President Kashim Shatima, at meeting of African heads of state and government on the 21st replenishment of the International Development Association, IDA 21, in Nairobi yesterday. And that's all the news on the Matrix newspaper. On the first news newspaper, Governor Diri stressed in commission as local government chairman emphasizes physical responsibility. BIA tells by moonlight an afterthought of um, an afterthought by the first news editor. NFF appoint Finidi George, uh, George, the new Super Eagles head coach. Banks in Nigeria lose 18 billion naira to fraudsters in 2023, a report coming from the NIBSS. Court halt plant price hike for DSTV and Go TV subscription. Naira shows resilience rebound to 1,275 naira to a dollar at the parallel market. JAM releases the 2024 UTME result over 8,400 score, 300 and above. Exam record more female enrollees, and then candidates can check their score by SMS, no need for CBT centers. MFLA receives $600,000 bribes from contractors weakness testify in court. Our youth will transition Nigeria into digital economy powerhouse state Tinubu. And on first scarcity, marketers blame NNPC supply challenges. More detail of that can be found in the paper. And the picture story is where we can see the governor of Ondo State, Loki Ayeda Tiwa, being presented with a certificate of return at the All Progressive Congress governorship candidate by the party national chairman Abdullah Higanduji on Monday at the APC National Secretariat in Abuja. And that's all on First News newspaper. On Authentic News Daily, policy group praises Tinubu's agri initiative, others false states governors. Six more Boko Haram terrorists surrender admits MNJTF's Lake Chad Basin operations. Details can be found on page 8. The big story, false scarcity. Sag Melikari within seven days group tells Tinubu. In Akwai Bomb, police parades fall over alleged kidnapping and cultism. Tragedy in River State missed opportunity for Akpabio to intervene. Is Yahaya Bello the sinner or the sinned against? A question you can find answers to on page two. And that's all the news on Authentic News Daily. All right, let's take a look at daily independent newspaper. Federal government must invest $10 billion annually for improved electricity coming from the minister. A senator's urge the reversal of tariff increase. Court orders EFCC to freeze 1,146 accounts of individuals' coin. And corruption allegation, Kiyamo demarketing Nigerian's aviation sector, coming from an expert, says aircraft li licensing insurance premium may rise over action. Minister trying to justify interference into the NCAA jurisdiction, detailed on page 29. 
NGX Group set to digitalize process of bank recapitalization exercise. Pay TV operators have the choice to fix prices. Bandits kill driver abduct two on Abuja Kaduna Highway. Lagos constituents uh, meeting cybersecurity advisory board in Nigeria. Four killed, others injured as headsmen attack Enugu community. Where we can see the pictures to dear Governor Umba visiting the community that were being attacked. Downside on 2024 was begin today with 1,814,344 candidates. 2024 YEG begins today with 1,814,344 candidates. And we wish all the candidates all the best as they write the exams. And that's all in the daily independent newspaper. On this day, NUPRC begins fresh oil fields build round and offers 17 blocks for sale begins due diligence on renaissance groups bid to acquire spdc's 2.4 billion dollar oil assets peaks s and p global boston consulting group as consultants komola faces 4.3 trillion now remitted to federal government in 2023 Speculators worsen petrol scarcity nationwide amid fears of price adjustment. Details can be found on page 27. A statement from Ribadu social media is a local global threat, now national security priority. In 2019, security strategy under review declares public engagement must change. Terrorist negotiator seeks transfer to Kruje prison. You can find details on page nine. The big story, Gandu J, no vacancy in Aso Rock in 2027, discloses Tinubu battling with previous government policies, some assaults. Aida Tiwa receives certificate of return. Kano court fixes May 16 to decide on charge service in ex-governor's grabbed case. And from Alake, Nigeria's mineral reserves valued at $750 billion. Details can be found on page 6. And then mission to Riyadh, where we can see um, Adesina, that is um, the president of the African Development Bank, together with the Minister of Finance, Edun, at the World Economic um, Forum. This picture was taken yesterday, and that's all the news on this day newspaper. Let's take a look at the business day newspaper. Lives at risk at 26.3 billion naira medical emergency fund relieved hospitals you can start reading on the front page and continue on page 29 kegs back as scarcity spread petrol near 1000 naira to a liter marketers expect normalcy by next week and we wish them that that will happen eventually so that everybody can have their lives back naira falls to two month low of 1419.41 to a daughter as foreign inflow slow. Do the numbers justify DSTV third rate hike in one year? This is a question. You can find that answer inside the paper. And a big interview here say delivering cheap long-term financing to Nigerian enterprise is critical to industrial growth coming from the MD and CEO of the Bank of Industry. You can find detail on page 16 and 17. We have that picture story again on the Transcorp hotels during their meeting yesterday, and that's all on Business Day newspaper. The big story on Punch Sports Extra Finiti is a solid choice for Eagle. Ex international back new Eagles coach to take team to next level, former Ajax man to name assistants. And we have the Champions League back Bayern versus Madrid, where we can see Bellingham and Kane. Bavarians lost Blancos clash in the UCL semis. Dessa hits back at critics. Red stole to swap Nunes for Osime. Details can be found on page 6. Liverpool brace for £150 million Salah offers. We have Anthony on face by £86 million free criticisms. You can find details on page 5. NFF owes me dead coaches coming from Truku. You can find details on page 7. Silva confirms Chelsea exit. Details can be found on page 4. City lucky against Forest. A statement from Pep. You can find details on page 4. 
Arsenal fan composes Havertz Chan. Unboxing knockouts galore at Rumble in the Hood 04. Nadal praises Djokovic. You can find details inside the paper. Nigeria to host on the 19th Volleyball Nations Cup. Details can be found on page two, and that's all the news on Point Sports Extra. Well, that's how far we can go on the program this morning. Thank you, Rachel, for joining us with me. And also, thank you to our viewers, thank you to our supporters, and for Nigerians out there, just let's keep holding up. We believe that things will soon come back to normalcy, even in the midst of the hardship. Do have a great day ahead. Thank <laughs> you.